The NDP just did something that has completely shaken my support for the party. They have thrown one of their own, MP Nikki Ashton, under the bus while also smearing former labor leader, UK labor leader Jeremy Corbyn, as an anti Semite when he is not. And there is so much to this. I. I almost didn't even cover this because th- this this story you have to peel back layers and layers and layers of uh, of the onion before you get to the actual truth. It is so frustrating how much BS has been put out there about Jeremy Corbyn that has now gotten to the point where you have the NDP capitulating to a far right wing organization that they think represents the Jewish voice. So let's just get right into it. This is how it started. Progressive International here announcing that they have a special event on with building uh, on building solidarity with Jeremy Corbyn and Nikki Ashton in support of the Progressive International. Quote, the system is broken, but it doesn't have to be this way. Let's work together to change it. Book your place now. So assuming this event's still going on, on March 20th, I will link to this below the video. Book your place to watch this live. I imagine it'll be a very uh, interesting discussion. Now, the reaction to this just absolutely insane. National Post here. Shock. Jewish groups react to NDP MP at Nikki Ashton event with ex-UK labor leader Jeremy Corbyn. Now, who do they reference for this uh, shock? Quote here. It was a mix of shock, disappointment, and a bit of revulsion that I felt when I saw that a sitting member of parliament would bring virtually to Canada the man who has been known to let a spirit of anti-Semitism pervade his party when he was at the helm of that party, reacted Richard Marco, Vice President of the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, CIJA. This is a right-wing organization. The NDP gave in to a right-wing organization and a complete BS lie about Jeremy Corbyn. Of course, they don't reference the over 40 Jewish groups that back and support Jeremy Corbyn. They don't reference that. They reference this right-wing Jewish group attacking him. And in turn, the NDP give into this that I'll I'll get to in a second. But first, some reaction here to um, CIJA as being the reason for this. Sam Hirsch here tweeting out, if you know CIJA opposes your event, you're in good company. As a Jew, CIJA doesn't speak for me. And increasingly, neither do they speak for a large number of Jewish Canadians who don't share their right-wing extremist views on Israel-Palestine. Michael Buchert here saying, Corbyn is a decent man who campaigned against South African apartheid. CIJA is a right-wing lobby group whose mandate is to defend Israeli apartheid. This shouldn't be difficult for the NDP. This gets to the heart of what the issue is. Jeremy Corbyn's criticisms of the Israeli government's treatment of Palestinians. Criticizing the Israeli government does not make you anti-Semitic. But to groups like the CIJA, it does. If you criticize anything the right-wing Israeli government does, you're anti-Semitic. You're all, all of a sudden against all Jews. How does that make any sense? But that's the standard that they have. And this is what the NDP gave into. Jeremy Appel here tweeting out just a reminder that CIJA is the product of of a hostile takeover of the Canadian Jewish Congress by right-wing donors and is in no way, and is in no capacity reflective of Canadian Jewish opinion despite its claims to the contrary. Now, how did the NDP, as I've been alluding to, react to this? A spokesperson for NDP leader Jagmeet Singh said Ashton never asked the party for permission before accepting to participate in the virtual conversation and that they only found out shortly before it was posted on social media. Before I even get to the Jeremy Corbyn part of this, never ask for permission. You have to ask for permission to meet with the former leader of the UK Labour Party. Did Jagmeet Singh ask for permission to do it back in 2019? It was a pleasure to talk about our shared vision of putting people first, Jeremy Corbyn. Together, we can be united in our fight for an economy that works better for all people, not just the wealthy few, and create a cleaner, fair world where everyone can build a good life. Perfectly okay, apparently, for Jagmeet Singh to meet with Jeremy Corbyn, but Nikki Ashton, she's got to ask for permission. Unbelievable. 
NDP go on to say here, quote, Jagmeet Singh and New Democrats are committed to fighting anti-Semitism and will continue to push the liberals to take more concrete actions like tackling online hate to combat it, Press Secretary Nina Amarov said in a statement. Now, let me get to right here. What Jeremy Corbyn has done in terms of getting into the fight and defending the Jewish people. So this is actually a great piece in the star. Uh, I'm going to link to it below the video. Historical record shows Jeremy Corbyn is a defender of Jews. Let me just read a piece of this here. In fact, while still a local counselor in London in 1977, Corbyn had already organized a defense of the Jewish population of Woodgreen from a neo-Nazi march, a recent compilation of the number of motions he advanced in Parliament to defend Jewish people alongside other public stances he took to tackle anti-Semitism, to denounce Holocaust deniers, to commemorate Jewish resi resistance to fascism, to pressure the police to do more to protect synagogues against vandalism, came to well over 50. And he did all of this not only in support of Jewish communities in the UK, but also in Iran, Turkey, France, Russia, and Eastern Europe. Indeed, the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burkow, himself Jewish, unreservedly expressed his belief that Corbyn was in no way anti-Semitic. Yet, of course, none of this referenced in any article attacking Jeremy Corbyn for somehow being anti-Semitic. Because it was completely made up. It was made up to hurt him during the election, and this has still, this is still stuck to him. Now, I mean, let me just, there's more here. Labor anti-Semitism claims Jewish group backs Corbyn. As I referenced earlier, over 40 Jewish groups back Jeremy Corbyn. Um, this was one of them, uh, Jewish Voice for Labor. Another one, Jewish Voice for Peace, also backed Jeremy Corbyn. Now, there was a, uh, a report um, that I covered October 29th that came out in the UK over anti-Semitism within the Labour Party that did exist, does exist, and the steps that were taken to address that by Jeremy Corbyn. It existed before Jeremy Corbyn became the leader of the party. They took steps to address it. It still wasn't enough. I covered that, uh, and then, I, and then they, the party suspended him for pointing out the obvious fact that the media used that to attack him while completely ignoring the Tories and their overt racism and xenophobia. So to give you, a, there's no way I'm going to go over. <laughs> this is like a 13 minute video, but please watch that video. It breaks down exactly the claims that were made. And the, uh, I mean, you'll see exactly the issues with the report and how this was all created as a way to, to um, hurt the socialists in the party, and ultimately, again, about the criticisms of the Israeli government and their treatment of Palestinians and not about the Jewish people. But I can't give you, you know, the full breakdown here, but watch that video. I will link to it below the video and also uh, above. And on that point, from Jacobin here, headline, we fought against South African apartheid and were appalled by Jeremy Corbyn's suspension. So that was in relation to the story I just showed you. Um, you had groups here come out to defend Jeremy Corbyn who has a long history, as I just detailed, of uh, fighting for uh, human rights. Quote, he has stood for decades in the cause of anti-racism at times when it was far from popular or convenient. How many labor MPs can match that type of record? And they're exactly right, because it, it got to the point where he was arrested for standing up for human rights, for uh, demonstrating against South African apartheid. This is an image from 1984, Jeremy Corbyn getting arrested for fighting against South African apartheid. It shows you that he's been on the side of human rights his entire career. Yet, of course, all this context completely lost in this smear of, um, of Jeremy Corbyn and the NDP throwing Nikki Ashton under the bus. Now, some reactions here. Dimitri Lascaris, who ran for uh, Green Party leader, ultimately lost, unfortunately. But tweets out here, apparently Jagmeet Singh believes that Nikki Ashton was obliged to ask for permission before agreeing to participate in a virtual conversation with former UK Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn, a person who has committed his life to human rights and social justice. Sven Robinson here, who is a longtime um, former uh, NDP MP, says this is pathetic Jagmeet Singh. Jeremy Corbyn has a lifetime history of fighting hatred and racism. As an MP, I collaborated with Tony Benn and others on several peace and justice campaigns with him. Shameful to join in dishonest smears of him for Palestine, uh, Palestine solidarity. 
Going on here, he says, and no, Nikki didn't need your permission to host this event, Jagmeet Singh, in support of uh, Progressive International. Instead of this attack on Nikki, you should be celebrating her efforts to promote international socialist solidarity, like your tweet to Jeremy, the one I referenced earlier where he met with him, and that was perfectly fine. Last tweet here. Check this out. So Christo Avalis, um, another YouTuber, has a new uh, Canadian podcast. He'll be interviewing Nikki Ashton today, and the interview's going up tomorrow. I imagine they're going to touch on this issue, though I'm not sure how much Nikki Ashton will actually be willing to discuss. Um, this is the issue with, you know, a party like this, where basically Nikki Ashton is not able to actually be her honest self and fight for what she believes in because of the insane leadership in the NDP. But hopefully Nikki Ashton will address this. So check out um, their interview with her that's going to be up on Friday. I will link to uh, their SoundCloud below the video as well. So go and subscribe to them. But again, um, this really has shaken my support of the NDP. There are great members of the party for sure. Nikki Ashton, of course, being one of them. Matthew Green being another one. But the actual people that run the NDP are just completely out of touch. And the fact that they are giving in to a right-wing organization proves it. 